The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another VWO webinar. My name is Utkarsh Rai, and I take up growth marketing initiatives at VWO. I'll be moderating today's session. For this session, we are excited to host marketing rock star, Mr. Michael Lezinski, who is joining us from Poland. Michael has taken various roles and challenges throughout his journey at GetResponse and is currently leading the content marketing team at GetResponse. He is also teaching a postgraduate course on email marketing in a college of good days. Uh, we welcome you, Michael. Uh, in this session, we are discussing about ways how we can retarget website visitors through email and how we can leverage different optimization techniques to drive them towards checkout. So discussing about the webinar flow, uh, building an email retargeting strategy and how you can use personalization to re-engage your lost opportunities or abandoned users will be taken care by Michael. And later on, I will be discussing about how you can improve your checkout flow to drive results. Uh, discuss, uh, I'll discuss basically about how, how, what you can improve on the checkout flow. For any questions, uh, you can reach out to me on Twitter with today's hashtag, hashtag AskVWO. You can also use the GoToWebinar questions widget to ask us anything. We'll take them up at the end of the session. So just, just a small announcement that we will be recording this session. So if feel free to basically not to worry about the recording and other things. So let's begin. I would request Michael to take it over from here. Michael. Over to you. Thanks a lot, Utkarsh, and hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be working with you guys, and I'm happy to uh, talk about uh, some capturing of abandoned carts with emails. So uh, many, think, many people think that retargeting is very simple. Uh, all you have to do is follow your customers with ads, uh, offer them a discount, and you're done. And to be honest, okay, you could, you could potentially uh, achieve some good results with these campaigns, uh, this kind of approach. But then again, you would, you might be burning your uh, marketing budget. This is not what we want to do. So today, I want to propose a more strategic approach towards uh, retargeting your customers uh, with emails. So the first thing you need to do to actually uh, understand what's happening and what to do is to understand the top reasons why people are abandoning their online shopping carts. And uh, looking at the different marketing reports, uh, statistics, we hear that around 70 to 80 percent of online shopping carts are being abandoned, which is a huge number. Uh, you know, more than two thirds of people are abandoning your uh, shopping carts. Uh, and there are many reasons for it, actually. So uh, from the statistics, it appears that, for example, there are unexpected shipping costs, people have to create a new user account and stuff like this. Uh, the important part here is that you can actually put them together, bundle them, and kind of uh, work your way backwards and try to, um, try to retarget your users, look, looking at the information why they're abandoning your cards. So for example, uh, let's take a look at the first group. So we have the people that, for example, uh, saw that there are unexpected shipping costs and they couldn't find a coupon code. So these are the people that actually are heavily affected by the price of your products, uh, by how much it costs. Uh, perhaps they were checking other websites and comparing the prices. So these are the people that are very, uh, very, um, going to be affected by your communication. So if you improve your communication, all you have to do uh, is, for example, offer them a better deal. And about 33% of people could be affected by your communication if it was improved. So this is one of the things that you can do. Um, next thing is looking at the people uh, in this group. Concerns about payment security and some people that were conducting research by later. Uh, if you improve your communication, perhaps you, you could convert around 32% of those people that abandon your shopping carts. Uh, looking at the payment security, um, okay, this is a common, common issue. If you check out a website that you haven't seen before, you wanna buy something, and then you're not sure whether your money will be processed well, if their, your money isn't going to go in the uh, right direction, right hands. Uh, there are many ways you can actually uh, work, uh, um, you can improve your shopping cart actually. She's going to talk about it a little more. But for example, um, there's this company called Transferwise, uh, uh, one company that I used to uh, used to use as a user myself. I remember the first time I went to their website and I was thinking, okay, you can transfer money abroad, 
uh, without going to banks and you don't have to pay such commission. So of course everyone would be afraid to do in this. So what they did is uh, to use other trust symbols to make me convince uh, to convince me that uh, you know that I should trust them. And what kind of trust symbols? For example, showing that Richard Branson uh, actually invested in their company, or showing that uh, they are the founders of Skype and then sold off the company to uh, Microsoft, if I remember correctly. So these are the kind of things that you can do, and you can actually improve that communication on the website and in your email campaigns later on. And when it comes to researching to buying products later, why not convince them, for example, to leave their email address and add, uh, add themselves to a wish list, for example, if the product was unavailable at that time. Okay, then we have another group. Um, some people will see that the, um, the checkout is long and confusing, or that they have to create a new user account. This is around 31% of all the people. And interestingly, of the people that have to create a new user account, there's actually quite a few people that, that think so, that they have to create a user account, uh, because your communication wasn't very clear. So one of the things that you can do is to improve your communication, uh, or just let your users know that they don't have to do it. Of course, this is also on the website, but uh, in terms, you, in case you see someone uh, that they're in the process in the checkout and they haven't actually uh, added the product to the card, they were just looking at something, or they were look, or they added it to the card, but they never uh, completed the purchase. You can actually communicate with them and uh, get them back with your communication by just pin, uh, just focusing on the benefits of your product and why it's worth buying from you. Uh, and the last group. No express shipping available. So this is a tiny group, 4%. Uh, but I think this is a very important one because, uh, for example, this is going to be different on all the different markets. Of course, other, other groups are going to be affected by the uh, market that you're in. It's also, impo it's also important. But uh, this one struck me most because this is the data uh, based on, on the US market, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it says US. Uh, in Poland, for example, no one, no one would expect uh, express shipping. So I don't think anyone would uh, leave their card because there's no sh uh, express shipping. But what's interesting, in Poland, for example, and other European countries, uh, actually paying uh, cash to the uh, to the delivery guys, actually, you know, cash, uh, cash on delivery uh, option is much more popular. And if you're actually moving to one, one of these uh, markets, this is something that you should consider. So not taking the money up front, but offering this uh, separate section, uh, separate um, uh, separate offer. So uh, it is important to understand why people are you, uh, abandoning your car. Uh, and there are many ways to find out, uh, of course, looking at the statistics is important, but there are many ways to find out why people are abandoning your website. For example, by asking them through email, messenger, for example, if they abandon your cart, but you had their, uh, had their information, you had a pic tracking pixel, you can then try to retarget them on, on Facebook. You can add an exit pop-up if they're leaving your website, just wait, there, why, did, why are you planning to leave or just here's a 10% discount uh, if you finish the purchase today, stuff like this. Uh, it's also useful to analyze the funnel. If you set up your goals properly in Google Analytics or other, uh, other analytical panel, you can check actually at which point people are uh, dropping out of your, uh, of your website. And this is an example from a Google merchandise store. Uh, the demo account, which anyone can look into. I highly recommend checking it out because there's a lot of information that can be useful for you guys, uh, even if you check how they've set up their store, what kind of goals they have, and uh, how many people are dropping out at different, uh, different moments. Uh, it's also important to look at what is being abandoned. So not only that people are abandoning the stuff, but what kind of products. And perhaps your strategy could not only be set up to, uh, to reflect you know, the, uh, to reflect that the products that people are um, leaving, but uh, your strategy could be different for different category of the products that they uh, that they're leaving behind. Maybe uh, some products have too high profit, um, too high pricing margins, uh, or perhaps uh, your communication at, in these categories isn't convincing. So it's important to look at uh, what it is and whether you actually want to convert these subscribers, um, convert these leads into paying customers. So uh, with, uh, with that out of the way, let's look, uh, look at the ways how we can come up with a retargeting strategy. And this is a several, uh, several step process. So let's, let's get to it. 
first of all, you have to consider timing. And uh, this is probably the most important element because whenever you're sending your email retargeting campaign, you have to make sure that it is spot on on time. And if you look at the time like report in Google Analytics, the first day, uh, you know, the first time they actually went to your website, is it on the same day? Or is it further down in, in, the, you know, in the time? And if it's taking them a bit longer, perhaps your email communication doesn't have to be set uh, straight away, but you can wait. For example, here we can see that after 12 to 30 days, there's a big percent of people that are still converting. So maybe your email retargeting communication can be timed in a longer period of time, not just on the very first day. Then you can look at the uh, Google Ads hour of day. If you're using, if you're using Google AdWords or you have set up a, a report like this yourself, you, you should see the information about which hours uh, are best for converting your, uh, your leads. Uh, the problem with that one is that usually e-commerce stores are open 24-7, so this, isn't, this shouldn't affect your, uh, your retargeting strategy because if your cu customer is, wants to buy during the night and when it's your uh, you know, night uh, your time, then you shouldn't be waiting. You should be retargeting them straight away. Uh, the last thing that you can do is look at the uh, at reports. For example, this is uh, our Get Response Email Marketing Benchmarks report. You can see what is the best time to send an email campaign. But again, uh, in my opinion, it's hard to generalize when it is the best time to send your email campaigns. With retargeting, the most important thing is to act quickly. So uh, what to do? Start as soon as possible, especially uh, when you're trying to send, when you're trying to um, convince your users to buy a product that uh, they don't have to think over very, very, uh, very long, um, um, very long time. It doesn't take them long, or it's not a product that they have to um, talk, talk to other uh, team members in the company, or it's something very expensive. So start as soon as possible, and don't schedule the time for your users. Uh, instead, look at their behavior and use uh, marketing automation and stuff like this. Same with remarketing ads. Just do it as as fast as possible, and don't assume anything. Just A/B test. Uh, so if you're unsure about something about the strategy, just A/B test it. And this is an example of a workflow they could use. Uh, so if someone abandons your cart, you could uh, send one type of campaign within an hour, another type of campaign within three hours, and see how these work out. Whether they're going to be uh, working out well. Uh, the next thing to look at is the frequency. So how often you should be sending your messages uh, to actually make your communication, your whole retargeting campaign effective. And in my opinion, over here, uh, it's also worth looking at the timeline report. Uh, so you can see uh, when it is that people are, um, people are uh, converting. Uh, for example, if you have a free trial, uh, let's say if you're a SaaS, you have 30 days free trial, you can see that most people will convert on the very first day, but also on the very last day when the uh, when the free trial is ending. So this is important and it all depends on the product that you're selling. It could be different. So take a look at this report. Uh, so with that, actually, uh, it's important to look at the, um, consider the products that you're selling. If you're selling something simple as jackets, then I'm guessing most people will convert on the very first day unless it's a leather jacket, something more expensive. But if you're selling cars or apartments, uh, don't get me wrong, but most people don't buy uh, you know, an apartment just on the spot if they receive an email, especially if it says, hey, this, uh, this apartment is still available. No one's going to believe that if you're going to say them, oh, uh, in one hour we'll sell out all the apartments in that, in that area. Of course, this isn't going to uh, work out in case of these kind of products. Uh, it's also worth uh, considering something called frequency capping. This is used uh, with um, with uh, PPC ads, but with emails and connect, when you're connecting it with different marketing channels, you also should consider how often you retarget your users uh, if you, so that you don't send them too many messages at the same time. So what to do? I would say um, plan a series, not a single message. So don't just assume that you're going to convert everyone within one single message or with that one single message. Uh, and when you're connecting different channels, so for example, email, messenger ads, SMS, et cetera, then look at the frequency capping. So you're not sending too many messages, especially within one given channel uh, at the same time. Because people could get annoyed easily if they see your ads and emails uh, you know, within the 24 hours, like 20 times. So you want to make sure that you're pacing it. Uh, and again, as I said, this is going to really depend on the product that you're selling. If you're selling, uh, if you're 
offering um, hotel rooms, this is going to be different than if you're selling, uh, you know, jackets. And when you're looking at metrics, also look not only at conversions, a conversion rate or the total number of conversions, but also look at opt-outs and spam complaints, especially with email campaigns. This is important because this is going to affect your deliverability and you don't want to uh, get into spam folder because you've sent too, uh, too many emails. Uh, one more thing here is an example of a communication plan that you could use. Uh, for example, send one email within two hours or within one hour from when the user abandoned the cart. Uh, you can send another one within 24 hours, then another one two or three days later, and uh, one uh, subtle hint at the end, maybe after a year. Uh, okay, I would say this isn't going to work if you're actually selling clothes online, so that message after a year, unless uh, you want to not show the same product, but just assume that if someone was looking for a winter jacket, uh, maybe they will be looking for a winter jacket the very next year, or if they were looking for a swimsuit, they will be looking for a swimsuit next year too. But if, again, for example, someone is going to, on summer vacation, uh, and they're checking out um, all, the, all the websites in October, why not send them a message next time in October, or maybe even a bit earlier in, in September, so that they will not have everything booked, uh, and they will have a look at your website again. So this is an example of a workflow they could use. Uh, this doesn't have to be very complicated stuff. Just uh, you know, align your blocks uh, one after another, uh, space them out with delays so that your messages aren't sent within the same day, but you know, within a couple of hours, then after 24 hours, 48 hours, and so on. Uh, and the last, in my opinion, most important element, uh, although I, I did say the same about timing, but uh, it's also important about not only to time your messages um, properly, but also to include the right things uh, to get your messages actually open. Uh, so, to first to get your actually yeah, that, that's the main point. It, it's not only about converting users, but first what you have to do is to convince them to open your email. So, uh, to to get them to open your emails, you have to look at different elements like your from name. Is it going to be sent? Uh, you know, a newsletter. A newsletter from blah 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 company, or you know your name of your shop, or something else, or your uh, customer support team member. So then you have to decide on what kind of frame, from name is going to be. Uh, subject line: whether you're going to be using power words, how long it's going to be. Uh, the length of the subject line is important, especially if you're selling a lot of uh, a lot of your products on mobile phones uh, through mobile devices. Uh, so if your website is mobile optimized and you have a lot of uh, customers using mobiles to access your store, then definitely make sure that your subject lines are shorter. Uh, use emojis, uh, use personalization, uh, just make your subject lines uh, interesting, especially if you can include the, num the name of the product or something that you know, makes them feel more emotional about that product, then definitely include that. Also look at the pre-header, so something that's all usually grayed out next to your subject line and is usually the first sentence in your message. This can help you improve the open rates. Deliverability, of course, if your messages aren't going to be delivered, if you don't build your list properly and uh, design your email properly, then there's no point in selling, uh, sending those messages. And something that's uh, often uh, forgotten is the past experience. If people had bad experience with your, uh, with your brand in the past, then it's very unlikely that they will convert uh, and that they will, they will check your website, that they will go back to your website oh, and keep checking your email. So, if you see that some people are inactive, they haven't liked your messages in the past, maybe, maybe suppress them and remove them from your main list so that you don't uh, keep retargeting them uh, because this is going to affect your deliverability. Uh, so it's important to remember about those things, but it's also important to look at uh, the different benchmarks um, and see what tactics are going to work best for you. I would say still A-B test them, but based on the results that we've gathered from uh, our database of customers, uh, it work, personalization does work. So, for example, uh, only 12% uh, or so of messages uh, have personalization, but they have stronger open rate, and the same goes with emojis. Uh, less than 10% of all messages have emojis, but they have stronger open rates and click-through rates. Even though emoji itself um, doesn't affect the click-throughs, uh, you know, the emoji in the subject line, but this is something that it seems that marketers that perform better are also the ones that use these kind of tactics. Um, and the next thing after people open your message is actually making them to, uh, make you, making them want to click on your message. So, 
Uh, there are a few tactics that you can choose. Here's one. Um, the first tactic is, is here's an example from Ralph Lauren. It's a subtle reminder. It doesn't actually talk about the product that you purchased. It's just offering help, help uh, and you know, making a joke about it that uh, these dogs guarded your product, then you can go back to your uh, shopping cart. Uh, this is the, probably the easiest way to do it, but you can do it actually better. So here's an, another example from Adidas. Uh, this one is actually showing the product that you've, uh, you've added to your cart. It's making a joke about, uh, you know, is your Wi-Fi okay? Uh, you, you were checking out our product. Um, you can go back to it, and then here on the on the on the second part of the email, you can see social proof, so uh, customer reviews uh, of people that actually purchased that product in the past, and especially the scene, uh, these seem to be images from social media, so user-generated content is con convincing, uh, more convincing than uh, typical messages, typical images from uh, produced by marketers. So definitely uh, use uh, use that tech, uh, technique. Uh, second tactic is adding a sense of urgency. So here's an example from Doggy Loot. Uh, when you abandon their card, they send you a message that, uh, wait a second, items you added to your card are almost sold out. So if you want your dog to starve, then fine, you can forget about this, uh, about this email. But of course, no one's go going to do that. So uh, this is affecting the emotions and, the, and it's timely and it's definitely convincing to users that we're thinking of buying something for their dog. Uh, two more examples from Google Store and from Mastro. Uh, the left one is showing you that the product that you wanted to buy is almost done, and the other one is saying that the promo ends in 19 days, so you want to go back to that one and make sure that you're buying it and you're not going to uh, you know, miss out on that opportunity. And the last, uh, no, not the last one, but the third tactic, uh, you can offer something more, for example, a discount. And this is probably the first thing that would come up to your mind, offer a discount, free shipping, free upgrade, free add-on, a gift, etc. But I would say don't always resort to that, don't always go to that, uh, that kind of message because at a later point, maybe you can do it. But you don't want to cut your margin, you don't want to you know, keep just offering something cheaper and cheaper. Sometimes all it takes is offering help instead of actually offering a better price because people are gen genuinely interested in your product. Uh, so this example from Bonobos was just uh, you know, offering a 20% discount on the first order. Uh, here's another uh, tactic, uh, which is actually focusing on key benefits. So instead of focusing uh, you know, on a discount, you can see uh, that the product that you were checking out has plenty of positive uh, benefits that you should be looking at and con uh, that should convince you to go back. So if you were looking at something that you were genuinely interested in, then you know, that list of, uh, of benefits is going to help you make a good decision. Uh, and this is, um, this is the last example that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, it's one of my favorite ones. So this is an email series from American Giant. Uh, it's an American company, uh, US retailer that is selling clothes. Uh, clothes, as they said, are built to last. So for example, this is a jacket that I was checking out and uh, within an, a couple of hours from checking out their, their website, I, I got an email that says, your new favorite. So straight away telling me well, that this product is amazing. It's still available. And, uh, this email is offering help only. We noticed you left something in your card and wanted to make sure you have all the information you, you need before you complete your purchase. So they just assumed that I wanted to buy that product, not that I left it out and you know that the price was too high. They, of, of course, they're offering help, questions, concerns, please don't hesitate to contact us. Then after one day, if I didn't buy that product, they, I get an, uh, another ma um, message, another email. This time they're talking about the story behind the jacket the results do better. So they're telling me what the story behind it was, why it was designed for men and women, uh, that it's exceptional quality, and that it's actually, as, as they said, it's designed and built to carry on the, that legacy with a modern tailored fit and premium details. And later on in the same email, uh, you, can, you can see that you can actually, um, they're trying to target me based on the gender, so either shop in uh, men's or shop women's. This is actually good, a uh, tactic that, can, that helps you learn more about your audience. Then it has actually uh, a social proof. The classic full zip has been called the greatest hoodie ever made by Slate Magazine. Uh, by Slate Magazine. Um, and then the very last part is actually going step by step through their jacket and what, is, uh, what it is that it's making it uh, amazing. Uh, so in my opinion, this is a very good message. Uh, it's not focused on discount as well. And the very last email 
Well, this is similar to the first one. Uh, so it's the last in the series sent a couple of days later. It says, luckily we saved it for you. Your new favorite is still available for purchase. And then it focuses on other stuff. So we offer free, easy returns. If you aren't satisfied with anything you purchase from us, feel free to return it anytime, any item, any reason, anytime. So this is actually a completely different thing, but you know, a uh, different approach. It's not only just offering help, but just making sure that they uh, emphasize all the, the, the right benefits of the product. So all in all, what to do is uh, in your messages, offer help, use reminders. Uh, so not only discounts, but the latest stage when you see in your time lag report that people are after 30 days, for example, they're converting uh, or stopping to convert and uh, offer them a discount at that time and focus on benefits. So it's not only about, you know, uh, lowering the price and uh, test, test, test everything. Uh, A-B testing is important. So there's no right or wrong in these kind of things. What you have to do is just make sure that yeah, you check what works best for you. Uh, thanks, Michael. Uh, yeah, thanks for sh sharing a comprehensive uh, email retargeting strategy with us. So, guys, uh, so far we discussed about how you can basically re-engage with your uh, existing users and who and the lost opportunities which kind of lands on your website, and how you can re-engage re to them using a comprehensive email retargeting strategy. So, once you kind of bring those people back on the site, there's only very limited things you can do. So. Let's quickly discuss about a checkout journey, which which a typical retargeted or re-engaged user kind of experience on, on your site. So basically what you've done is you started with uh, running a campaign. It could be like the email email retargeting strategy or email re retargeting, which you kind of did with with companies like GetResponse, HubSpot, and all the email marketing automation companies. And then there are other tools like push notifications, which, which you can use to basically re-engage with your customers again. Now, once you kind of re-engage with them, you kind of use the messaging, the content, and the different personalization tools, which Michael was broadly was talking about. And you use that motivation to basically uh, uh, push push your users to kind of add uh, products to your cart. And once you kind of reach the cart page and you kind of get those products added, there's a checkout page, which kind of basically holds the fort for you to, towards, uh, towards driving revenue for you. So now once you have kind of have them back on the site and have got them till, till the checkout page, all you got to do is to get them converted. So the basic thing which, uh, which basically you websites could, should have on the site or have it on the checkout page is, is are some conversion triggers because there are a lot of things which kind of come into a user's mind while, while that person kind of reaches the, your checkout page. And it's and like a lot of tactics which Michael discussed in the presentation, like he discussed about scarcity, he discussed about using social proof, he discussed about focusing on your key benefits, why it's basically essential to do business with you. And using personalization triggers, these are the key conversion triggers which you should have consistently on your website. So uh, most of the business, businesses, what they do is they kind of spend heavily on, on the re-engagement part and does not optimize their checkout pages so that you know they kind of sync the entire story in a, in a in a in a synchronized harmony so let's basically jump on to the different areas which which can help you in terms of improving your checkout flow the first and foremost is basically reducing the fears for checkout now i discussed about there are a lot of fears which uh, a user might face and i'll discuss it in the course of this presentation that there are a lot of fears which a user might face while reaching your checkout page, why that person is not converting on your site. Uh, second thing you can use to improve your checkout flow is building trust with your website design. Then you can reinforce your benefits on basically why it's, why whatever offering, whatever value you guys can offer to your, to your customers, to your users. It, it's very important to basically lay that out on the site everywhere because these, those things kind of work as a trust indicator for the users to basically trust you with their details, with, with the purchase, with the one want to make with you guys. Then comes is psychological cues, different behavior cues like uh, Michael discussed about scarcity, Michael discussed about social proof. We'll basically learn how we can use all of that on, on, on the checkout page. And the last is removing distractions from your checkout page. This is very important. And to cover this, I'll be discussing about a case study which we kind of had with RVW customer 
and how basically his conversion rates were kind of dropping because of they had it had a lot of distractions. So we'll discuss that in the end of the session. So starting with the checkout fears, first comes the fear of credit card information being stolen. So users, a lot of them does not complete the checkout process thinking that, you know, uh, what if they, the website is a fraud or what if that, you know, my credit card information is not kind of secured on the site. So one way of kind of fixing this is that you use an HTTPS link for your site, which is a secured way of using a website. Uh, you secure we are building a website then using ssl different different security financial transaction licenses so that which ensure that there is no phishing or there is no hacking uh, counters on your on your site so the, it's very important to basically use all of these measures and kind of reflect that in your website as well so that your users know about you know that you are using these measures already then another fear which comes to users mind while making a purchase on the checkout page is that I can't tell what, what the product was really like. This this can also be come come to a point when you know the user visitor is kind of visiting your product page and kind of not finding enough description about the product. So one thing which you can use here is to basically come get over with this fear or scare for your users is basically use a very descriptive way of uh, describing the entire product and kind of ensuring that, you know, you kind of walk an extra mile in terms of seeing that what kind of works well, depending on your, depending your past customers recommendation. I'll, I'll take an example to explain this further later in my presentation that how you can basically ensure that the look and feel or the guidance of a salesperson kind of, you know, you kind of take care of that on on description which you kind of share on the site then another information is that another fear is that you know you, you kind of sell you are just selling or spamming those users with emails or selling their information to third party vendors so it's important to have a very clear privacy policy on your site ensuring that you know their data would be very safe with them and there would be no won't be any encounters of you know sending them a lot of promotional emails or things like that and it's important to basically abide those uh, guide, guides, abide those policies which you draft for, for your users because it will help you in terms of scaling or seeing a long-term growth for your business. And another thing is basically I don't like to get stuck with the product which I bought from X or Y Z side. So it's important to have a return policy in place. It's important to basically have a transaction policy in place in terms of you know how what would be the period of money money back. If, if you offer a money back or what would be the period of time where where you know they can send send the product back if they're kind of not satisfied with it the another fear which, which which comes to users mind is that you know they're not able to track their orders now most websites like amazon zalora flipkart and all these have tra have used third party vendors to basically send out deliveries and they kind of integrate their platform on their site to basically track orders so it's a good way to build that trust, build, to basically bust that fear out of your user's mind. The another thing which which not a lot of businesses use is that, you know, and which is kind of a big fear for uh, users is that, you know, they kind of think that with, what if the website which I'm kind of browsing is a fake store? Because, you know, your new, you know, your new visitors, your new users would always be very skeptical in terms of making that purchase. So how you can basically address this is by sending, sharing pictures of your team of your warehouse on your site in your about sec about a section which kind of build trust that you know you're a credible business you are kind of committed towards it and you kind of spend and invested heavily in, into you know setting it up and there's no way that you know they you will be bluffing them or doing a fraud with, with your customers so you that trust needs to be came come out on on your about a site on 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 the on, on few, one of or many of the pages of your site also, what, what more you can do is basically share your Google uh, location of, of your office so that, you know, that the visitors or, or your users kind of know that, you know, your office has a location and you does operate through a physical office. So that kind of also helps in, in terms of addressing this challenge. Uh, talk, coming back to the, to the fear which, which you kind of, you know, maybe share the look and feel of, of a product is basically... I, I take an example of this oolong chardonnay tea 
Now, if you read about the description, it it has kind of three things which kind of stands out in in the description of this this product. First is that it kind of shares that you know how you kind of use and basically have an optimum experience with this tea. So they've kind of uh, laid out the way of you know how you should prepare this tea. Also, they've kind of shared you know with what kind of food or with what kind of uh, things this tea will go well. So they've kind of mentioned that you know that goes well with. Fruits, like it goes well with pickles and things like that, and also it kind of shares more recipes which you can build with that tea. So, as you can see, they've kind of uh, put up all that description very nicely on the site, and that kind of eliminate the need of having a salesperson or maybe sharing that look and feel. So you can also use uh, different pictures of the product so that you can basically focus more on areas in terms of maybe seeing. and displaying you know how the product would actually look like so these were a few fears which kind of comes on a user in your user's mind while kind of that person reaches the checkout page and these are two uh, examples how you can kind of bust them the next uh, next point which next step which kind of you know comes into my mind in terms of improving the checkout page is indicating trust with your design now uh, michael also discussed about having shipping laying out your shipping policy laying out you know that your credible business showing your what are the ways you kind of benefit your customers on on your design so it's important to kind of lay out a different section to the ship, shipping method because shipping is one concern which kind of you know repeatedly comes on a user's mind uh, michael also shared a data uh, uh, basically a graph in terms of you know how these things that kind of challenges or roadblocks for your user to convert on your site second is thing is basically laying out your laying out your transaction policy and using icons like either a lock or a security key which kind of indicates that you know you you have kind of built a secure platform then basically designing your header or the navigation areas of your site in a manner which kind of indicate trust with either being collaborative with big brands which 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 kind of been listed on your site offering the shipping policy right there running a few campaigns in terms of you know how what, it could be a fathers day it could be a big billion day anything which you you know might want to run for your uh, for your customers to kind of get attracted to the, to those offers to so basically kind of recommend uh, add all those niche details which basic you want to basically offer to to your users on on the site itself use it in your header use it in your navigational cues so that they kind of get highlighted very aggressively very prominently on your site now another way of uh, improving your checkout flow is basically reinforcing your benefits now a lot of businesses what they do is they kind of use a chat support which is kind of the usp that you know whenever uh, they feel that you know their user or their potential buyers kind of got stuck with in terms of either choosing or maybe choosing a payment method or maybe need to understand the shipping policy or anything that you know which needs to be addressed then and there and usually when you know a person kind of gets stuck with these challenges there there isn't a lot of time to address those things so a chat support or even a automated chat support where maybe a live chat support or automated chat support can kind of you know fit fit the bill here with the automatic chat support you kind of address those areas of you know maybe you can earmark those keyword as shipping or maybe the things which you you know kind of link those collaterals to and basically offer them a solution then and there so let's say if somebody has a problem with shipping and that person just type shipping in his message so you kind of offer them uh, kind of display them the shipping policy then and there similarly if there is a return policy and that person has a query about return policy so basically you can kind of automate those responses using a chatbot and you can also maybe if if you have the bandwidth on the resources you can even dedicate a person who can basically take take this support support systems on an on a on an existing basis also it's important to basically lay out your different benefits whether it be it free shipping whether it be it easy return policy whether it be it be it very fast shipping maybe you maybe you're a prime or you also run subscriptions things like that you basically lay down lay all of those details down on a checkout page it kind of helps in showcasing that you're a credible business and you are kind of investing in terms of making and making 
and making your users experience an optimized one. Now moving on, uh, we also discussed about using behavior cues on your site. Like there's this one cue where you kind of urging scarcity, where that you know you say that you know only three or four uh, samples or there only three or four pieces of the product are kind of left. A lot of businesses already use that, but uh, Michael also discussed about and raised this point that you know it's important to kind of first understand your niche and then use these cues because he took an example of that that you know uh, you might be selling real estate so you cannot uh, say that if if somebody kind of miss out on buying a house so maybe you go back to that person and say that hey all the houses of that lane is kind of been sold now so that's something which is very difficult to believe in so you have to kind of use these. Uh, behavior cues very smartly. You have to kind of use it if if you can kind of track the user behavior. And I would basically recommend a lot of uh, services which kind of helps you in doing qualitative and quantitative research, and see and realize that you know whether that same person is kind of revisiting your page again and again, and whether uh, you can kind of you know show this depending on your inventory that you know whether this product is kind of getting sold so that thing would kind of add a sense of urgency into the context and it might kind of help your user to take a decision there similarly using social proof uh, basically showing the number of people who are kind of visiting that product page the number of people who have kind of already added that product into their cart and the kind of uh, and even a number where you know the people have kind of moved from the cart page to the checkout page even that kind of an information is kind of you know available these days and this kind of adds another sense of urgency in in your visitors or your potential customers mind and these social proofs kind of work brilliantly for a lot of businesses and this is something which you can le leverage readily there are a lot of platforms kind of you know providing all these things like drift drift also provides a social proof kind of a platform you can use that. Moving on, uh, this is uh, one example of an optimized checkout page. Let's quickly let's quickly see that you know what are the things which this page have already have. First thing to see is, is to build trust is that you know uh, that person who whichever product he's buying, there's a thumbnail of that product to ensure that you know that person is buying the right product. That person is very sure because you know the person did not you don't want that person to go back to the product page again and see that you know he's at adding the right he's adding the right shoe or he's adding the right shoe size or the right color or things like that so it's best to use the thumbnail of that particular product which which that person has added to the checkout page to, to the to his cart and it's essential to show that to build trust that you know and remove confusion from your user's mind then showcasing that you know you use a secure payment gateway and mostly all major credit cards or debit cards are kind of accepted on your platform so that kind of you know reduces the layer of uh, uncertainty where you know the user will see whether paypal is kind of listed or not or whether a few banking com bank banks are kind of listed for their debit card or not or the credit card companies are listed or not so it's it's essential to have a wide list of those payment gateway methods so that you know you kind of remove that barrier because you know there's a lot of promotional or credit reward plans which these credit card companies or with debit, these debit card companies run and people are kind of you know in a rage of you know reaching those milestones so especially like american express uh, american express has a very great uh, rewarding mechanism and they kind of you know pushes me uh, being an American Express user, that pushes me to maybe use most of my transactions, use American Express as for most of my transactions. So that I reach a milestone and then then avail those benefits which kind of come with that achieving, at, with achieving that milestone. So it's important to have those variety of things and you can even collaborate with these companies to maybe offer discounts and cashbacks uh, on your site. So basically kind of adds more exclusivity around, around your users. Then another thing is running exclusive offers for 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 your users, if if you kind of know that you know they're kind of re-engaging with the platform again, they were a lost opportunity before. So it's, it it makes sense if you can offer them a five percent or a ten percent discount on their purchase, so that you kind of ensure, ensure that they kind of retain on the site. Then laying down your shipping policy once again just before making the purchase, 
it kind of helps in terms of you know user remove the remove the kind of confusion that they already have in their mind that you know whether it's a free shipping or whether it's a paid shipping whether it's a fast shipping or not so it's important to basically lay down shipping as a key element on on, on your checkout page another thing which i don't know whether you guys are able to read it or not is adding adding that the slight sense of scarcity on on or urgency on on the checkout page now there's there's this uh, sentence mentioned on the checkout page right below the shopping cart where it's mentioned that stock are reserved for 60 minutes only so this kind of says that you know whatever you kind of added to the checkout and whatever stocks are kind of available right now will be only be available for 60 minutes so this kind of gives you a window of 60 minutes so there are a lot of other issues other reasons also which you know where even after doing all a lot of, a lot of these things your user still want to maybe make a just la- do a last minute peek into a, your competitor website and see you know what offer they are offering or basically read a little more of reviews of the product which they are want to buy and might leave it leave you at the checkout page so this kind of ensure that they have a 60 minute window to kind of do all those activities and come back to the site to make this purchase and the offer which and the exclusive offer which you kind of uh, offered on the checkout page would stay only for 60 minutes so these are the few things which you can leverage on on your checkout page to improve your conversion now with with the last bit of of the presentation i'll be covering the the last part which was removing distractions from from your checkout page so this was this uh, one case study uh, for a customer name on which kind of saw a very huge drop from from people coming from the cart to to the checkout page so as, as you can see that there is a almost like a three fourth drop on on the page they initially they saw like 580 eight people coming from their cart to to the checkout page and only like 272 people were actually converting and they saw that there was a high drop off rate from the checkout page and the reason for that was there was a lot of distractions available on the checkout page so discussing about you know the things they already had on the page were a sign up for for their email newsletter there were social sharing buttons for for them to share what they bought from from the site with their friends they have options to basically navigate further into different pages on the site and and they they had a very insignificant or like a very small look, looking checkout button on the site so by so by running an ab test they kind of improved on these things they kind of removed all those distractions and kind of made the checkout button a little more prominent and with with just by doing this small experiment they kind of increased the checkout uh, uh, cart to checkout conversion by 12% which is which is a great number for businesses in terms of revenue so yeah this was all which i had to cover about improving uh, your your cart to checkout conversion because you know with with all the retargeting activities with all the reengagement you do on through email campaigns through push notifications with your customers it all boils down to basically driving them towards checkout driving them towards revenue so it's essential to have Uh, the entire story which you kind of sing in your email campaign things which the motivating factor you kind of discuss or use in your email or in your push notifications so that basically kind of connects with with the online story which you guys have to offer on your cart and the checkout pages so yeah with that uh, we kind of sum up the presentation now we'll be open for questions for the session uh, so maybe to give you a little bit of more time to maybe consolidate your thoughts around around the session uh, maybe we can start with with our first seed question which would be coming from myself so michael i basically want to know uh, have you seen these email retargeting strategies which you kind of discussed in the pre- presentation working out for any of your customers and would you like to share uh, yeah. any case uh, with us Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, so yes, we have seen uh, some good results with these retargeting campaigns, and uh, luckily, it wasn't just a single email retargeting message, but these were longer uh, email retargeting series. So, uh, without actually disclosing the name of the customer, but 
and there's this customer that I really am fond of because this is actually uh, an interesting niche. Uh, I'm, an, I'm their target audience because I have a baby, uh, baby son. Uh, so they're selling uh, baby products, so like baby bottles and soothers and something like this. So uh, they have a retargeting uh, series. Uh, so they've plugged in their uh, WooCommerce store using uh, our integration uh, with GetResponse. And their messages are actually receiving amazing results. So the average open rates are around, so for the first message is around 80% with clicks just below 20%. So you can see that, uh, you know, four-fifths of everyone who received that uh, message are actually opening it and then one-fifth are clicking through it. And the next messages uh, are getting just slightly lower results. So this is uh, so around 60% opens and then 15% clicks. So these are very, very good results. And of course, this is uh, this is be mainly because uh, you know the beautiful design and the products that they're selling, but also because of the target audience that they're targeting. And so, uh, being myself a parent, I know how uh, how important it is to buy these products that uh, you know that are safe for your babies, that uh, you that look cute and everything. And you cannot uh, probably uh, just uh, not spend enough <laughs> and buy those things. You don't want to. Uh, bargain too much. You want to buy something that's good for them. So there's you know this relationship uh, with with the brand, with the product itself, and with with you know the reason why you're buying it. So uh, there are many emotions going on over here. So that's why the, these campaigns are receiving such results. But again, uh, this is working out very well for most of the people, and if not all of the people that we're seeing. Of course, you have to connect with other channels too. So uh, ads retargeting as well. Is important. Awesome. So we have started getting some questions uh, already. So the first question comes from Shilpa. She asked us that do you have any other tips for using Google Analytics to track performance and conversion? Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So maybe sure, yeah. Michael, you can start, and then maybe I can cover it on the op conversion optimization point of view. Sure, sure, definitely. So definitely I would be looking at the pages that people are dropping off uh, just to make sure that, you know, you're actually optimizing these pages, uh, the ones that are losing the biggest amount of people. Uh, so you're actually, even before creating your messages, maybe you can just fix your checkout page. You can check all the information that you have there, whether it's something that is confusing, the navigation is confusing, it's not working. So maybe there's this easy fix that you can do over there. Uh, and one one more thing, uh, that, for example, the free shipping, free returns, stuff like that. It doesn't have to be the information that you only keep in your, um, you know, retargeting emails. So your whole email communication uh, and on your page, that information could be there. So I would start with uh, just to, uh, like you know, looking at the time lag report, uh, looking at the um, your your conversions uh, in Google Analytics, and just checking which pages and for which segments actually. Uh, you're achieving the best conversions because it could be just a reason that you know cer certain segments from certain websites or from certain, um, for example, using certain devices, they're not converting very well. Uh, this has been the case, for example, when we were using a PPC campaign, we saw that you know have plenty of traffic, but then it seems that no one's converting. Why is it? And then you're digging into the data and oh, we, because we've targeted automatically to people on model mobile devices in a, a very small uh, country that wasn't very you know interested in our offers. So it could be something uh, as simple as changing the target on this. Uh, so definitely look into that in Google Analytics. Yeah, and Michael mostly covered all the bits in, in, in his answer. Uh, one thing basically I want to talk about is basically Google Analytics is a great, great place to discuss and analyze your quantitative data. And with quantitative data, you can basically understand what exactly uh, your user or your visitor is doing on the site. So maybe time spent on the page, uh, bounces off rate, uh, basically what, what are the new entrant areas where the user is kind of either entering the site and maybe what are the drop off points where the kind of the user kind of leaving the site. So you kind of first kind of invest some time in terms of analyzing what your user is doing and then kind of add another fold of doing qualitative research to basically understand why that your user is doing and why you're basically your user is behaving in a certain way. So 
so there are uh, tools like heat maps there are tools like recordings there are tools like uh, form analysis and things like that which you can kind of run after maybe identifying those opportunities through your qualitative research that you know what are those areas you may maybe need answers to because you kind of first identify that you know what your user is doing on the site and to answer to answer why they are behaving in a certain way you kind of you leverage these tools and uh, then basically kind of uh, build hypotheses around you know that maybe that person is behaving in a certain way because they are some navigation problem that person is maybe behaving in a certain way because that person does not kind of gets confused after reaching that stage or whether there is no certain call to action or a direction to move from x page to y page so first kind of you know see look into your google analytics data see what your users are doing maybe then do a qualitative research and then build strong hypotheses and basically see that you know that yeah maybe this is the reason and maybe if i fix x y z on the page or maybe just start with one element first on the page and let me fix that maybe make make a clear direction for for the user to go from one page to another maybe by making the button a little more prominent by maybe you know calling out or maybe giving a very descriptive call to action on the page and then see that you know if, if the problem still persists and maybe testing it with by running an ab test on the site and then see that you know whether this makes an impact or not so that way google analytics offers you a wide variety of data which you kind of use and build strong analysis Uh, description so yeah uh, the next question we have is uh, from holly holly has a question saying that how can i use uh, various methods which we kind of discussed in the site uh, on in the presentation for driving membership subscription for her site so maybe uh, michael you can discuss about how we, she can leverage email marketing or email retargeting to drive membership subscription on her site Sure, sure. So um, probably it would depend kind of on the type of membership uh, subscription subscription product that you have or service. Uh, but definitely all the psychological cues that uh, Utkarsh has mentioned on the website. So uh, scarcity, uh, so trustworthiness, um, social proof. These are the things that you can uh, use in your email. So social proof, of course, using gen- user generated content and actually, you know, a Posts from people that are uh, are affected that are already users of your subscription product, or uh, using any brands that have mentioned you, whether your product has been featured anywhere else, or you could uh, try uh, drive sense of urgency, like uh, in the example uh, Outcrush said uh, used. So, for example, Booking.com uses something like this. Six people are looking at this product right now, or uh, last time it was uh, something. Um, this hotel was booked it was within an hour uh, you can do uh, so sh- some shorter campaigns as well so for for example for first 100 people that sign up you know they're going to receive this and that uh, so you can definitely use all those uh, all those psychological cues in your email communication you just have to test them out and make sure that they are uh, very valuable and relevant to the product uh, that you're offering uh, so like with the case with an apartment you cannot say that straight away hey we've got just one last apartment check it out uh, or I guess you could but uh, I think that it has to be something that you know I'm guessing your product is more relatable so maybe you can play on emotions uh, with you know with the people that are interested in your offer So what do you think with Karsh? Yeah, another thing which I would want to add is this basically you can use uh, tools like surveys on your site and kind of, you know, uh, do that when where you kind of, you know, bringing bringing users to sign up for your membership subscription. And kind of, you know, maybe do an in- initial survey saying that, you know, what are the things you basically would love to have if we kind of roll out a membership for you. So you can have you can make it an MCQ like survey and then basically collect responses. and see that you know what are the things which people would really want to see or want to have in your subscription whether it be, be it free shipping whether it be it fast delivery whether it be it exclusive offers and be it, i mean it could be a, a n number of things so initially run a survey then kind of once uh, once you've kind of drafted a subscription policy then kind of run it at various places and see what is the response and on the sign up page where you kind of you know tracking or maybe 
recording all the subscript uh, all the sign ups for your subscription if try to use a form analyzer there and see what are the areas or what are the uh, fields where you, your user kind might be dropping off so once you kind of identified these two things you kind of first identify that what what is the expectation of your customer or of your user who would want to sign up for your free, uh, for your membership subscription then you kind of identify till what extent or till what level of information that user is willing to offer to you uh, you might be asking for a lot of things which the user would think that you know i i i'm not very comfortable in, in terms of sharing all those things so just get get a hang of all those things and then use those things use that information in terms of driving those email campaigns driving those notification driving those marketing uh, distribution things which which you want to do around in terms of driving that membership subscription so yeah that's a good well, starting jump. point for you yeah let me jump on that one as well uh, you can do one automatic thing here over here as well so for example if you wanted to run surveys uh, using emails uh, you could do something called lead scoring so uh, assign scoring points to people that in, uh, that engage with your offer that have converted and have used, uh, you know, have opened your emails, etc. And you can actually find out the most engaged people and, for example, offer them, uh, send them a survey, so only to those people rather than everyone else, and offer them something special, either, for example, Amazon uh, discount card or something like this. But uh, you're reaching out at this moment only to the most engaged people uh, and actually asking them um, to fill out a survey or answer a few questions is going to help you out because you're focusing on your right target audience and uh, you can actually learn what kind of words that they use, how they describe your product. Uh, so you can, see, uh, the co you can see the copy that uh, they provide you with. This is something that you can actually use in your emails later on and your whole website, to be honest. So the actual words that they use to find your product or to describe it. So this is something that can help you improve your emails, but not only. Yeah, I think that suggestion of using, uh, using engagement score uh, on your existing email list or existing customer list would kind of really help because that way you kind of understand that you know what are the people who are kind of repeat visitors or repeat user or repeat customers for your site or for your platform and it's best to basically reach segment them and reach out to them in an extensive way because they are more likely to maybe enroll to your subscription plan so i think we are yeah. slightly over with the time but we still have a few questions so i'll just take one more question uh, this question comes from joy and Joy has, Joy has a question saying that what is the most important element in an email uh, retargeting strategy? And uh, basically, how can a business implement it once knowing that it has a very small team, small marketing team? So sure, maybe, sure. Uh, Michael, you can help us with that. that sure, thing. I'd be happy to. Uh, so it's actually quite funny because uh, I remember that uh, Many people were asking what about showing products within the emails uh, and the retargeting emails, and it seems that for some customers you don't even have to do it. So if it's taking you, you know, a lot of development time, you can actually send emails that just basically say "come back to my cart." But the most important uh, element, uh, I would say, is timing. So making sure that you know people actually the ones that leave your site are getting the message, just a reminder of what, that, you know, that they left something behind. And uh, it doesn't have to be only when people are have uh, abandoned the cart. For example, I remember Timberland is sending uh, retargeting emails to people are, that were browsing even through their site, but have previously signed up to their email list. So I would say definitely uh, being able to time that message and send it at the right time. So plugging it into your um, e-commerce store, connecting it with your email platform, making sure that the message is sent at the right time. Uh, and that's about it, I, I would say. Of course, you have, you know, the subject line is going to be important to make your message open, uh, but the timing, if, if you were asking about one single element. Also, yeah, on the part where you kind of mentioned that, you know, what to do when you have a small marketing or an email team, uh, I think automated campaigns kind of work really well here uh, you might have to spend some time in terms of uh, maybe setting them up in the beginning but platforms like get response kind of get the job done very quickly and you won't have to like invest a lot of time into it you just have to you know feed some information and which mostly kind of been done by the cookie which you, you kind of serves to your users 
or the kind of information like you know which page they kind of visited what kind of product they have added so you can basically set up uh, automated campaigns and drip campaigns can also work here and you know marketing automation tools like get response kind of you know help you in terms of doing all those things so yeah i think uh, we are a little over time and would want to keep things uh, within within the parameters of time so yeah uh, summing up the, the session michael thanks a lot for your time uh, to come here and share your experience with us thanks to all the attendees for attending the session we'll come back again very soon with another pressing subject in fact we have our next webinar is with unmetric which is a social analytics company and they'll be primarily discussing about how you can improve your social media strategy in terms of first of all getting more people in in your network in as, and growing your audience and what kind of content you should build and distribute through through those channels to have maximum engagement so stay tuned for that session that's coming up on 27th of september till then keep optimizing Bye-bye.